This call is being recorded. Amen. Welcome everyone to the Guiding Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference call. This is your Sunday School Lesson Edition, and I am your host, guest speaker, Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest E Church in Harvest, Alabama. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is a day we've never seen before and a day we will never see again. And as always, we believe it is a day to praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's go now to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for all of your blessings. We thank you, God, because we understand, realize, recognize, and acknowledge that you've been better to us than we have been to ourselves. We lift you up this day on this Palm Sunday morning. We say, Hosanna in the highest. Praise be your name, O oh God. Thank you right now in the name of Jesus. We lift you up and we wave our palms in the air, O oh God, because you're so worthy of the praise. You're King of kings and Lord of lords, and we thank you for being that kind of God. We give you glory now, God, and we ask you as we get ready to study your word this day, dear Lord, that you anoint afresh. Anoint us that we might speak your word, but then anoint those that are listening to your word, Lord. We plead the blood of Jesus over this technology of Facebook and conference calls, Lord. Have your way right now in the name of Jesus. And for all those that are going through things where they are sick or they're shut in or, 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 or then they stop feeling good, Lord, we just ask you right now to just bless them right now. We plead the blood of Jesus over everyone's life, dear Lord. And we ask you for some mighty supernatural healing from the top of their heads to the sole of their feet. Oh, Lord, we know you can do it. And then those that are dealing with financial problems or relationship problems, God, we just ask you to show up and show out in the name of Jesus. You can do it, God, because you, you, nothing, nothing, Lord, nothing is impossible for you. You're the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And we give you glory for this. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Our Sunday school lesson today is from a very, 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 very familiar passage of Scripture. Hallelujah. We're we going to look at John, the third chapter. John, the third chapter. That's, that's what the Sunday school lesson calls for. And, and it's so uh, ironic. Um, a couple of weeks ago, on the Friday Night Light broadcast, God led me to uh, teach or preach or whatever you want to call it on John 3.16. And, and, and I realized at that point, oh man, it's going to happen again in two weeks on Palm Sunday. So we're going to do it again today. Hallelujah. But I tell you, anytime you look at John chapter 3 and even uh, really John 3.16, it's so many different things you can see say about it oh hallelujah it, it is the gospel john three sixteen is the gospel in the nutshell so let us go now to our text and we're going to read john chapter um three and we're going to read verses one through 16 and uh because so we are so familiar with this i want to read it straight out of the king james version of the bible because we're just so familiar with hearing it from there and then later on when we're talking about it i'll deal with the new living translation so listen to it from john uh the king james version john chapter 3 starting at verse 1 there was a man of the pharisees uh, named nicodemus a ruler of the Jews, the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles 
that thou does it, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How, how, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listens, and, and, the, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot, canst not tell whence it come and whether it goes. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto them, How, how, how can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I told you earthly things, you ye and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you heavenly things? And no man has ascended unto heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. God, for God, for God, for God, so love the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Our key verse is that last verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And this, and that, that key verse, God, God's love sent Jesus as a special gift to the world. God loved us so much that he did not want us to die and, and, and be separated from him forever. So God sent Jesus, his only begotten son, to die. For the sins of the world. We cannot buy it. Or earn God's gift. It's a gift. He gave it to us freely. Everyone who believes and trusts in Jesus Christ. Will be saved. And those who are saved will have everlasting, eternal, forever life in heaven with our Lord and Savior. Oh, hallelujah. If that's all you get from this lesson, that's more than enough. Oh, hallelujah. The key concept for this lesson is that God sent Jesus to die for our sins and the sins of all people of this world. 
I, 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 get, I can't stop right there and get caught up with that because he didn't just die for you and for me. He died for everybody. God loves everybody. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Now, I always like to give keys for kids uh, uh, so that, that those who, who say, well, 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 you know, you be getting too deep in Sunday school. And no, no, I, I want to keep it simple because the word of God is, 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 is supposed to be able to, even a child should be able to understand it. So the keys to kids is this. Number one, God loves us and he wants us to be saved, which means he wants us to be forgiven of our sins and follow him. Number two, God showed his love by, uh, for the world by giving his son Jesus. And thirdly, we must believe and trust in Jesus to have eternal life. Oh, hallelujah. Now, 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 let's get into it. For, for the deep folks, this, this, this is what we're going to do with this lesson. And, 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 and we're going to do it real quick. So, so, so you got to hold on to your seat because we're going we gonna, to we gonna wear this thing out. Lord, have, have mercy. Lord, bless us. Bless us. Yeah, my, my sister and I, uh, we always tease each other. I tell her, I say, good preaching is, is fast teaching and good teaching is, is, is slow preaching. Ha, <laughs> ha. Hallelujah. So we're going to see if we're going to preach this thing or we're going to teach this thing this morning. Glory. Hallelujah. So our learning facts. Our learning facts this morning is to describe the interaction between Jesus and Nicodemus. The biblical principle we want to get out of this lesson is to explain why God acted in a self-sacrificing way for an undeserving world. And then the daily application we want to take from this lesson is to reflect God's gracious love in our own self-giving service to others. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. When you, you come out of this lesson, you got to have some love. When you come out of this lesson, you, you got to be in a position where you're ready to be a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Are you ready to give like God gave? Are you ready to love like God loved? Oh, hallelujah. My wife bought me some new coffee this morning, some Hawaiian hazelnut. Boy, I tell you, this coffee is something good. I can't help but keep sipping it. <laughs> Amen. And it is decaf, so I won't be clamming the wall. Amen. <laughs> Glory. Hallelujah. Our outline, we, we got an outline in three parts. That This is the straight outline of this lesson. Nicodemus meets and engages Jesus. That's verses 1 through 8. Jesus critiques Nicodemus, verses 9 through 12. And then Jesus explains the application of God's saving love. That's John uh, um, 3, chapter 3, verses 14 through 16. Now, that's, that's how we're going to talk about it. But, but I want you to see something in this lesson. Um, that, that in this lesson, in this lesson, there is throughout it, the word love. You, you don't you don't see love nothing but in in the sixteenth verse. But but the whole chapter is dealing with a love, a love that's so so awesome, a love that's so true, a love that's so special. It, it it's it's an unfathomable love, a love that that God has chosen to give a world. And a people that don't love him back. We call that kind of love agape love, but 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 but, but agape love is, is, is an unconditional love. And I look at God's love, and I say His love is even greater than that. It's that kind of love. It's a love that's so marvelous. It's a love that's so great that that words cannot express. 
how awesome God's love is. And so when we look at this lesson, we're going to talk about that kind of love. A love that includes, a love that motivates, and a love that gives. Oh, hallelujah. We're going to look at it from that love standpoint. So let's dig into our lesson. Let's dig into our lesson. Uh, Nicodemus meets and engages Jesus. Read now out of the New Living Translation. Um, New Living Translation said there was a man named Nicodemus, a Jewish leader, religious leader, who was a Pharisee. And after dark, one evening, he came to Jesus to speak to him. And he said, Rabbi, we know that God has sent you to, to, to teach us. Your miraculous signs are evidence that God is with you. Jesus replied to him, I, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. What, what do you mean? Explained Nicodemus. How, how can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus replied, I, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of the water and of the spirit. Humans can reproduce only humans. But the Spirit, the Holy Spirit gives spiritual birth, or gives birth to spiritual life. So don't be surprised when I say you must be born again. The wind blows where it wants, and just as you can just as you can hear the wind, but you can't tell where it comes from or where it's going. So you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. Nicodemus. The text says was a Jewish religious leader. Nicodemus was a Pharisee. Part of that group of people who had an enormous amount of rules and regulations that they followed in order to keep themselves clean and set apart and, and they, 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 they took the, 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 the rule of the law literally they cared nothing about the spirit of the law but, but they took it and they, and, they, and, they, and they nitpicked at it and they followed it and they had they, they, they stuck their nose up at anybody that didn't follow it. When I talked about this text a couple of weeks ago, I talked about it from the standpoint of moving from religion to a relationship. Religion is all about rules and regulations. Religion is, is all about doing this and not doing that. Where a relationship is, is such that when you know somebody, when you in love with somebody, you don't need rules and regulations. Your love compels you to do that which is right. This man, this man Nicodemus, came to Jesus at night. I, I, I call him Nick at night. Some say he came because he was fearing for, for that his friends of the other Pharisees might, might know that, that he was coming and he would get ostracized. And, but, but, but the end of the scholars say, well, he came because he knew that Jesus always had a public ministry going on in and, and, and the daytime and he came at night so he could have a private conversation. Either way, this religious leader Nicodemus wanted to talk to Jesus. And when he saw Jesus, he started giving Jesus accolades. Oh, Rabbi, we know you're sent from God. You're great teacher, all of this, and, and we know because of the signs and wonders that we've seen you do, they must exist, you have to come from God. 
And what always throws me is that as he gave Jesus all of these accolades. In verse 3, Jesus steps in and says, <laughs> you must be born again. You can't see the kingdom of God unless you're born again. You, you can't be uh, just so religious that you think you're going to work your way into heaven. It has nothing to do with your heritage that, that you are a child of Abraham and, and that automatically gets you into heaven. Let me bring this thing down to where we are today. Just because your mama went to church, just because your daddy went to church, just because your grandmama had some good old five-time religion, don't mean that you got a relationship with Jesus. It's a one-on-one -on -one thing. It's a personal thing. You have to have a personal relationship with Jesus. And in order to have that personal relationship with him, you must be born again. Nicodemus was thrown off because he didn't ask that question. What must I do to be saved? How do I get into the kingdom of God? But Jesus went there. And I don't care who we are, Jesus will always go there. He will go there with us. Yeah, he went there. He got real personal. Because it's a personal relationship. He's not going to let us just, 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 just fake this thing out. Play, play church. Play, no, no, no. This is a real relationship. It's personal. So, Jesus got very personal with him. He was giving Jesus all these accolades. Jesus said, I don't want to hear all that. You got to be born again. And so that's what was going on here. And so, at that point, Nicodemus said, well, how can this thing be? What do you mean? What? I don't understand. I don't comprehend this being born again stuff. How, how can a man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? He, he's saying, there, look, I don't understand how this transaction can occur in the natural. Can an old man jump back into his old mama's womb? That's a natural thing. Jesus replied, no, that ain't what I'm talking about, dog. That ain't what I'm trying to get you to understand. This thing is not natural. It's supernatural. Yeah. See, I assure you, he says, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of the water and of the spirit. Now, born of the water could mean the natural water that we come out when we come out of the birth canal. The, the mother's water is broken and we come out. But the water also can mean the word of God. Also could mean the power of Jesus. The word of God is Jesus and Jesus is the word because that's how we began this thing in the beginning and in the beginning was the word and the word was with God Jesus has said he was the living water so when we think about the word of God it has the ability to cleanse us it has the ability to draw us the word draws us Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. So the water can mean Christ and his word. But then the spirit of God has to move on you. Just like in the beginning of time when, 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 when the spirit hovered over the chaos of the world, the spirit hovered over it. Spirit has to move in your life. And when the Holy Spirit moves in your life, when he gives you that faith to claim and call on the name of Jesus and accept him as your Lord and Savior with a personal relationship, it's a marvelous thing. 
It's a born again experience. I love how the old folks used to say when I stepped in the water, the water was cold and chilled my body, but not my soul. When I came out, I had I, my hands looked new and my feet did too. I had a new walk and I had a new talk. Uh, that's about being born again. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Or he says, humans. And the New Living Translation says, humans can produce only human life. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. But the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. So don't be surprised when I say to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it, wherever it wants and just as it comes from and uh, uh, just as you hear the wind, you can't tell where it comes from or where it was going. So you can't explain how people are born of the spirit. When we were kids, we call the wind in St. Louis in the wintertime, the hulk. <laughs> Boy, that wind be blowing and coming off that Mississippi River and it'll meet you at your front door. It get to blowing so hard it start rattling the door and you go outside and hawk say, hey, I'm the hawk, I'm here. You don't know where it came from and you don't know where it's going. The wind this past week up in Chicago, the windy city, they know about the hawk. That wind got so bad in Chicago that it, that it even blew out the windows of some skyscrapers. And we don't even want to talk about when the wind shows up down here in Alabama. Tornadoes going everywhere. I found out last week that Huntsville is, is considered the most tornado hit city in the country. Oh, mercy God. We don't know where that wind coming from and we don't know where it's going. That's how the Holy Spirit is when he comes upon us. Oh, hallelujah. So Nicodemus meets and engages Jesus. And Jesus tells them, you must be born again. The next section of this lesson is, Jesus critiques Nicodemus. Listen to verses 9 through 12. Nicodemus asks him and says, how can these things be? How, how, how are these things possible? And Jesus replied, you are a respected Jewish teacher. And yet you do not understand these things. I assure you. We tell you what we know. And have seen. And yet you won't believe our testimony. But. If you don't believe me. When I tell you about earthly things, how can you possibly believe if I tell you about heavenly things? Jesus. Say, look here, dog. We've been talking. It's been a good conversation, but uh, I thought you was a Jewish religious leader. I thought, I thought, I thought you didn't study the scripture. I thought you understood the word of God. And yet, after all your Old Testament reading about how the spirit of God moved on the earth, the spirit of God moved upon men and women to prophesy, to teach, and to do great and mighty works. 
And you're trying to tell me that after doing all of that studying and understanding that you don't understand how the spirit moves? I thought you understood all of this from your great study. But hey, it's all right. I, I know, I know you, 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 the spirit spirit things are too mystical and 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 and, and they are too abstract for you to understand so 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 i ain't, i'm not gonna even, i'm not gonna even bother with you because see i didn't try to tell you these things from an earthly perspective and now you want me to go deeper and try to explain to you from a heavenly perspective now you you ain't gonna get this that was jesus critique of him you you ain't you ain't gonna understand this thing. You you ain't gonna grab a hold of this thing. This thing this thing this thing might be too deep for you. But but hold on hold on hold on. Let's find some common ground. Let's find some common ground. And so, after Jesus gives this critique, Jesus explains the application. Of God's saving love. Listen to verse 14. And as Moses. Lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the wilderness. So the son of man. Must be lifted up. So that everyone who believes in him. Will have eternal life I love that because Jesus met Nicodemus right where he was Nicodemus came to Jesus with some preconceived notions and assumptions and Jesus, in order to break the monotony of his understanding, he took him to the word of God and took him all the way back to Moses, to the one that a Pharisee, a religious leader, Israelite, would understand the most. And he took them back to the story of where the children of Israel were in a disobedient state and God allowed snakes to bite them and come at them and, and then he told them, say, now Moses, those that's got faith, what I want you to do is I want you to put a snake on your staff and lift that snake up. Brown snake. Lift that thing up. And if they look on it and believe, they'll be saved. And the children of Israel did that. They looked up. And they believed. And they were saved. Now. The question is. Just like the children of Israel. Will you look up? To that old rugged cross. Where Jesus hung, bled, and died, and believed in his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Will you believe that it has the power of salvation in his death, his burial, and his resurrection? Oh, glory, hallelujah. On this Palm Sunday, 
as we start into our Passion Week, Jesus' Passion Week. He's entering into the city and everybody's hollering, Hosanna, Hosanna. Lord God in the highest. They're, they're hollering and they're screaming at him coming in. But by Friday, those same folks who was praising his name coming into the city, riding on a donkey, holler, crucify him, crucify him. But after he was lifted up upon that cross, they realized that he was truly the Son of God. And so when the Word of God says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life, he's showing us that we have saving grace through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Look at the order of love in our text. It is something that for us, we have to look in the inside of us and see that it is inadequate. Our love is inadequate. We, we ourselves are, are wretched. But God's love is so awesome in this text. God doesn't love us because Christ came. God doesn't love us because Christ died. No. God so loved us, no matter what, that he gave his only begotten son. Christ died because of the love of God for us, compelled him to give his only begotten son. God came as a consequence. I mean, Christ came as a consequence of God's great love. This love, this, this incarnation is, 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 is love in action. You give love. And when you give love, you act in love. That deep love, that strong, awesome love is the key to help this world. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. And Jesus gave us that love. That kind of love includes everybody in the world. Doesn't matter what denomination, doesn't matter what church you go to, does not matter what family you're born into, that love includes everybody. And that love ought to motivate us. To love others and to give our time, our talent, and our treasure in love. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to end this lesson with this as a conclusion. God loves us so much that he gave Jesus to save us. He loves us that much. That kind of love does not matter about our sins. He'll forgive us if we call upon his name. He loves us. He loved the whole world. That he let his son die for us. No greater love than this for a man to lay down his life. For his friend. And Jesus did it. Even while we were yet. Sinners. Christ died. For. The ungodly. So if you believe in Jesus Christ. 
God promised that you will live with him forever and ever and ever. Let us pray the prayer of salvation. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sins and was raised from the dead. Thank you, God. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord of my life, to rule and to reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. On Facebook, we're going to close this recording. If you want to join us on the conference call where we have prayer and where we talk and discuss the lesson in overtime, you're more than welcome to come and be with us. The number to call on the conference call is 910-218-0531. Again, 910-218-0531. Call us. And as always on Facebook, as we close, be blessed and be a blessing.